Good afternoon everybody, Alex Starcraft here bringing you guys another replay from the Chef uh, This Week in Replays Team Liquid uh, replay pack. As I said, Chef at the beginning, it is featuring Liquid's Chef. I have casted one replay from this before. Wow, a little bit of lag, sorry about that. And um, it was actually, it was the game Chef versus Todd. I have uploaded that to my channel and I saw some of you guys did watch it. But very unfortunately, as my friend pointed out, I guess you guys might not have noticed, there's actually a skip in the uploaded video because when I was, um, when I record this, of course, it's in a whole bunch of different segments, and then I have to stitch them all together, but sometimes I accidentally mess up a little bit when I'm uh, stitching them together. So, a few minutes in the game were skipped, but they were a few crucial minutes, and I ended up just taking it down from my channel just because I thought... If there's ever anyone looking at my channel, I don't want them seeing something like that. And as good of a game as that was, I don't really want to try and recast it. Just because then it would maybe ruin the effect a little bit. What I might do, I might wait for maybe a few weeks. See if I could maybe cast it then. Unless there's, of course, a major patch or something. Or if you guys want and you want to let me know in the comments. Of course, I know the chances of that are low because there's not that many of you quite yet. But if you really do want me to just recast it, I will do it for... um. As you don't know, it was a, uh, it was just a ZVP. Todd is a very good Warcraft 3 player on Zone Rocket Towers, in which it looked like Todd was very far ahead, but then Sheth had one really good play and kind of forced a base race in which he just totally overwhelmed Todd, which was surprising just because he was going uh, Zergling, Mu yeah, Ling Muta versus Archon, Zealot, High Templar, Sentry. So, of course, not ideal. But back to this game, uh, you see these guys have been chatting a little bit just because um, I think these games might have been played on the Korean ladder. I cannot tell you for sure just because in the replay back I did see some games. It's like Motivation, which is Chef versus random Korean characters that, of course, I don't know what they mean. But I guess this is they were talking earlier. Uh, let's take a look at the No, not the help menu message log. Let's see what they were talking about. Um... Okay, Mouse Thorzane is guessing to get who he is. A, um, okay, Thorzane, yes, Thorzane is playing on the Korean ladder. So this was indeed on the Korean ladder. Looks like Thorzane might have missed that drone right there. But yeah, no, it is not Stefano. It is indeed Sheth. And this is going to be on the map um, Taldarim Altar. I know I've casted some games on that before. And as I've said before, it is a really big macro map which is uh very prone to uh long of course macro style games now we did see chef go for the hatch first which of course plays in favor to to this um what do you call it to this big macro map um but at the same time that is the standard build for zerg you generally do, do go for 14 15 hatch i didn't see exactly what chef did and that's just because a lot of times you need that extra larva, you need to get that economy up and rolling. And if you do it right, a 2 racks isn't a big issue. Now it does look like Thorzane might be going for 2 racks. actually I haven't been watching that much. Um, no, he is just going to be going for a 1 racks, but he's constantly pumping out marines, he's up to 4 now. Looks like he might have tried to feign a little bit of bunker pressure with his SCV. Let's see, what did he see? No, he just saw the completed natural expansion. So he's just doing a little bit of scouting, figuring out where he was. And now he's just kind of got these marines in the center of the map doing a little bit of um, scouting, a little bit of map control, about as much as a Terran can get at this point without Hellions. Speaking of which, there's the factory. Wow, he does get this expansion up and running. And this is something that um, Terran players have been doing for quite a while. Oftentimes you'll see um, some people like MVP who are totally crazy. They'll go like one barracks, three command center or something. And they will just macro insanely well and will actually keep up with a Zerg on the supply. It can be very scary. But recently, Zergs have also started to punish that, which is a very good thing. Because, of course, like, what Spanishiwa does, he just attacks with a whole bunch of roaches, generally around the 6-ish minute mark, if I recall correctly. Like, if say he attacked Thorzane with 7 roaches here, Thorzane would just straight up die. So, Zergs are learning, oh, if I attack this now... If I hit this timing versus a big macro Terran, it can do a lot of damage. And so for now, we really, I don't, has anything been lost? Okay, one worker or two, yeah, two Zerglings have been lost for Sheth. But you can see he's way ahead in our workers. Of course, that is a little balanced out by the mule, which I'm sure, yeah, we see them being dropped right now. But 
right now, Sheth is just kind of building up Zerglings, building up drones. It will be, um, soon he will be choosing what tech he's going to be going. Will he be going for something like a fast third? Will he be going for more guys? And speaking of which, as I said, there is that third command center from Thor Zane. Kind of insane how heavy macro that these Terrans will go for. And what that could probably be, yeah, it's probably for at first just going to be to see what he can do with, oh, uh, he's losing a few Marines there. Fairly even trade? No, definitely not. Uh, definitely favored the Terran there. But as I was saying, uh, it looks like for now he's just going to be going for the third command center, help saturate this faster. Looks like he did go for a little Hellion prod in the front. But this is what uh, many Zergs do. This is what I myself do. Just like use evolution chambers, macro hatch, some creep spread spine crawlers. And Hellions, really, they don't want to try and run into your base. It would just be way too much, um, way too many losses. And I bet even if he held position with the Queens, like here and here, the Hellions couldn't even get in the base. So very good uh, defensive play, very good SimCity uh, pseudo-wall kind of thing from Chef. And so now, uh, we do see what Teki is kind of going to be going for. And as of yet, he does not have the Lair on the way. I'd imagine we'd see that very soon. But he's going to be going for some Zerglings with some pretty good upgrades. He has the plus one Carapace on the way here. And I could have sworn I saw something else. But I could just be wrong. So right now we see Sheth is, has a comfortable lead in Harvesters. He's actually making his Lair just natural. Which this is something you'll see Zergs do sometimes. Just because... Um, it might be a little harder to scout, and it's really, the sentiment is, if you, you yeah, if you lose your natural, you're probably going to lose the game anyway, so it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's at your natural or your main. And so it looks like uh, Thorzane looking to go for a little bit of a push here, he does have a whole bunch of Hellions, so he runs them up, and it looks like he's going to be trying to kill the Creep Tumor, which is so annoying, but those spine crawlers with their very large range, they can reach everything that's down here. So Thor Zane being forced to retreat without doing a whole lot of damage. But this is what I was talking about. See, Thor Zane is even on supply with Sheth. He's actually a little bit ahead. And Sheth is not like, you know, the most insane uh, macro Zerg in the world. But he's still very good macro player. Getting a nice little surround on the Zerg. So you're going to go for, yeah, gonna go for a little bit of aggression. But these Hellions warding off the Zerg. And saying, no, you can't come in here. And oh god, that's just kind of a slaughterhouse right there a lot of zerglings lost but uh he didn't lose too much more the number of resources lost is still about the same as it was after that first little uh engagement where thorzane lost a few marines who do with the third hatch coming down from sheth and yes he at almost the same time uh thorzane going to throw down his third he's going breaking down these rocks i'm not sure what we have the zerglings over here for i'm not sure if they were going to break down some of the rocks or if they're just scouting for a hidden base proxy tech uh maybe running around for some drops so speaking of which chef's overlord spread is actually not the best you can see what zergs will normally want to do is they want to have overlord spread out along here and up along here he does have a few uh that will see a dropship him coming and it looks like Sheth is going to be going for the Infestor route as well as Baning. So he's pathaging lands on the way. So in about six seconds, he will be able to make some Infestors. I would imagine we'd see that if he had any minerals, which he doesn't because he's droning, which makes sense. And the Baning Nest. And for now, everyone just kind of scouting. Sheth throwing down, uh, throwing in this Overlord at the same time seeing Thorzane throw down that third expansion. So he does see the timing on that. And right now, this has been, as I said, as I um, said, often happens on this map, it's a very big macro style game. And I guess one big, one reason Sheth is actually probably putting up those up there is for a flank if he wants to do it. And also, so if, say, Thor's ain't scanned, say, oh, there's not many units here in attacks. He's just like, bam, I actually have twice as many units as you thought I did. He's also morphing in a good number of banelings there. Which I guess might uh, help reveal that, or help hide the fact that he does indeed have Baneling tech. And we have a very fast hive coming out from Sheth. And I really like this. Just because I'm of the opinion, oh, the Zerglings are going to get the surround, yes. But just because I'm of the opinion that um, these professionals, while of course I can't judge too much, but while these professionals are really, really good, a lot of times they don't get up to hive quite quickly enough. So they're doing uh, really well on their mid-game, and this Zergling does spot this drop coming, so Chef should be prepared for that. Of course, the drop is also going to see this hatchery going down. 
So that'll be kind of annoying. Sheth's going to have to cancel that, otherwise he's just going to lose it. But as I was saying, um, really we just... Uh, oh yes, the Zergs, they'll do really well in the mid game versus the Terrans. But then, as it gets to late game, he does not actually... Um, they do not actually transition into the lair. Oh my god, Sheth. Okay, good run. Losing two Infestors there, so that wasn't great. But he does get two good Fungals off. Going to kill every single Marine. So that wasn't a bad trade right there. Uh, we do have the Vikings doing some patrolling, any Overlords. And we actually have Sheth going for Ultralisks. This is an interesting decision, though. I guess it makes sense because he doesn't have a he doesn't have a Spire, and he's poised to get the plus three Carapace. He has the plus one melee attack on the way and everything, Burrow, all that stuff. And Sheth's doing a very good job being very active with his Zerglings. Just whenever Thorzane sends out a few Marines here, a few Hallians over here, he runs over and he picks them off. We see Thorzane is still. He's still even on supply. And wow, Sheth has a hundred drones right now. And that is not that good. He's definitely over a bit. He definitely needs to throw down some gases here. I'm sure we'll see that in just a second. But. That, yeah, that's kind of not good. Of course, that could be intentional, but that is a lot of drones. That means his army is 59 in supply versus Thorzane's, which is about 90. Uh, maybe even more. No, it's actually about 110-ish. How many workers did he have? I can't remember. Okay, yeah, so it is about 90. So that is kind of a scary thought because we all know the Zerg's units are not the strongest in the world. So if they can take on a Terran with a much bigger army... It'll be very interesting to see, and we do have these drops coming everywhere, not really managing to do any damage to the main, but they are doing a lot of denying of the expansions, all that stuff, so that is very good. Sheth is ready for a drop to be coming here. This hatch does go up, but it looks like Thorzane was ready for it. He's going to try and pick it off before Sheth can get there, and I think he will be able to. Yeah, the hatch is at less than half health, so unless... um. Is he going to focus it down, though? The Banings could get some huge hits, but no. Nice pickup from Thorzane. Sheth managing to save that, so that was very nice. He does force, I yeah, the cancel on this hedge right here. And it seems like right now both players are, um, really, even though not a whole lot is happening, don't underestimate how much is going on in this game. You can see both of them are playing with some very high APMs. Sheth is a little higher at the moment, uh, a little higher overall. But we see both players, it's like, even though there's not a whole lot of big engagements, anything like that coming out, there are, ooh, pretty big Baneling hits going out right there. The Siege Tanks, unfortunately, are able to reach, and the Hatch does get picked off, but all the Marines also die, so that's not too bad for Sheth, not as bad as it could be. But both players having a whole lot of drops, trying to expand, trying to drone up, and Sheth still has too many drones. He does have Ultralisks on the way now, which, let's see, what kind of tech does Thorazane have? I actually haven't been paying that much attention so far, so far because it's looked pretty standard. But yeah, no, he's just going Marine, what is it, just Marines, Medivacs, and Siege Tanks and Thors. But this could actually be really good for Sheth, because the high Marine count is not good versus Ultras. A lot of times you'll see Terrans, once they see Ultras, they'll just transition into almost pure Marauder, and that will just destroy the Ultralisks. But as of right now, he doesn't know anything, burring a few Banelings right there, so that's nice. But it looks like Sheth is gearing up for an attack. He's essentially max. He's trying to grab more expansions and whatnot. Oh, I thought this was a hatchery for a second. That'd be a little weird. But I actually have, uh, I think someone was saying, like, the GSL or something. Someone actually dropped a command center, like, here or something behind a mineral line and just muled it out over the course of the game. And the Zerg actually did not scout it because, of course, you don't look behind the mineral line a lot of times. But... I'm very excited for an engagement to be happening soon. I want something to happen in this game. Because look at the resources lost tab. There's been about 4,000 for each player. But that's just been um, over the course of many, many drops. Stuff like that. And there it is. Sheth revealing the Ultra Tech. Totally cleaning up that drop. His spy, his second Spire is almost done. His greatest Spire is on the way. And we do have the, um, the plus three armor on the way. Ship weapons level one. Which I'm not sure what that's exactly for. But we have some, a whole bunch, just both players getting almost every piece of tech that they can. And I want and need an attack to happen because I'm running out of things to say a little bit. You guys can see it all almost in the production tab. I'm just trying to expand, deny expansions, tech up, all sorts of stuff like that. But we actually, uh, here comes the engagement. 
not really any fungals, but Ultra is just running in, not managing the micro from Thorazane. And the Ultras are really doing work here. Of course, these ghosts are very good against the Ultras, but everything just getting cleaved in two by the Ultralisks. And it looks like sh Thorazane is not in great shape. Again, the sentries and snipes doing very well. It looks like Sheth is just kind of running in. And it looks like he doesn't actually have very many more forces on the map. Beautiful fungal coming off from Sheth. And these ultras are just not really dying. Eventually they are cleaned, cleaned up as well as two changelings. Very interesting. I'm not sure exactly what those are from. But we do have two changelings. But now we see Sheth 10 ultras and 42 zerglings on the way here. And Sheth is on one, two, three, four. He's on four mining bases, trying to get up a fifth and then another macro hatch. So he's actually on even bases with Thorzane, but you can see that trade definitely went in his favor. Uh, I just like these little marines in here. I guess I'll pick them off probably in just a second, because you'll notice he can't select them. But um, the only thing is the, the gig is kind of up maybe for Sheth now, because he did have that surprise factor of like what he is ultras just because normally you'll see the broodlord stuff like that but now we see what's being produced is a marauder ghost ball and that is almost as good as you can get against an ultralisk it's only maybe shy of immortals and so it looks like we will be having another gauge be coming very soon the stim coming in and the ultras running in as well great fungal from sheth and the Ultras are just running in again, they're cleaving everything apart, a whole bunch of Zerglings are dying, or not Zerglings, Banings from the Siege Tanks and whatnot. But again, it looks like there might just be too many, um, too many Ultras from Chef. Some good snipes going down, but there's still a whole bunch of Ultras alive, there's nine alive still. Thor's ain't stutter stepping to the best of his ability, but a big Baning hit going off there. These Ultras are running the other direction, and there's the GG from Thor's in. And I don't think he had too much hope left anyway. You see, there were a whole bunch of Zerglings being made all across the map. And those would have been able to do a lot of damage as well. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm actually going to go back and look at something. This is actually the first time I've done this. I didn't note about where it was in the game. Because I wasn't paying attention to the game clock. But the engagement, uh, that first big engagement, where I didn't think a fungal went down. And that Thor's Aim just didn't really... Um, Thorzane just didn't really micro, but I just need to take a look at that real quick, make sure I wasn't um, lying to you guys. Let's go ahead and put it on faster really quick. And here we go. So are there any fungals coming down? No, it looks like the Zergling's just running in. And no, Thorzane simply did not micro right there, so that might have uh, cost him it. Of course, his, the Ultras were kind of surrounded, and I know he did have a lot of else, other work to do, uh, sieging tanks and whatnot, but I think that could have almost been it right there. And uh, Sheth just going with a very nice kind of surprise tactic, just with getting the Ultras. It's not expected by Terrence. And I hope that you guys all enjoyed this game, and I'll be bringing you more in the near future. Please like my videos, comment if you have anything to say, subscribe, share with all your friends, because I want to share StarCraft 2 with the world. And I love all of you. Have a wonderful day.